So uh, I guess you guys got a little bit of caffeine rush and some sugar rush. You're all awake. No? Oh my. Do you need one more shot? Yeah. yeah? <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I'm usually not a nervous speaker. I love speaking, and I've been speaking at many conferences. But this group I'm attending for the very first time, like especially the minds who work for operations, development in operations, platform engineering, SREs. I've never been specifically in this group to represent or talk about the topic that I'm planning to do today. But I see it's very relevant because it's very hazy and it's not much well-defined in the industry right now because of which the overall efficiency in the software engineering is being driven down and it's not helping the scrum teams or the per se development teams to work better. And I'm here to share a story of a test engineering team which is not catching up with the present technological advancements or the innovations that's coming up from the operations perspective. And it's completely ignoring this aspect of development um, and not serving you know, um, positively in a way. So it is not letting us to move as fast as we would love to do it. Now, having said that, the test ops, well, never mind. First of all, the test ops is not even a recognized word, if you see. If you go to any accredited um, uh, language or the keyword dictionaries, if you see, this is not even recognized. It's not even a word, actually. But it is emerging. People are using this more often. And especially the tools that's coming out in the market is using this term. The other term for this will also be QA ops. So is it a new vertical in the industry? Is it a new role that is getting opened up? Is it some new jargon that we have to face? Or is it purely coming out of a frustration? Let's address this today in my talk. For the next 30 minutes, you will share a ride with me where you take a look about what test ops is, the present challenges of the test engineering team that they are facing, the role of DevOps, how we can collaborate better to make everybody's life easier, and also bring in that software engineering efficiency from the testing perspective, and maybe some recommendations from my point of view. I'm Soumya Sridharamurthy. I work as an engineering manager at a SaaS-based company. We have offices both in NL and uh, US. I believe uh, in inclusive development, and I guide and mentor my teams to do accessibility-driven uh, software uh, projects because we have to make the world a better place for everybody. I run a very active um, meetup group called APNs from Netherlands, where the pure focus is towards APIs, being the next phase of technological advancements. APIs are the binding agents, so I have a very keen interest towards anything and everything related to APIs, so I run this uh, very active meetup group. Um, I'm also very much into community collaborations and contributions, so hence goes by a few names like Postman Supernova, Browser Stack Champion, P Cloudy Change Leader, these titles are not necessarily required for me to show off on this stage, but it is just to give you an information that I have been very active in this space for the last 17 years. I have been uh, part of uh, IT teams in different roles, and I approach uh, a software development aspects from different angles. So I know the challenge in this industry all round through, and it makes, it makes me a person to be more confident on this stage to express what I want to get through by message. Uh, those are my social handles. I would love to connect with you. Um, yeah. So let's start with the journey of what is DevOps. We have been addressing this from yesterday morning. Development and operations is DevOps. Great. Now I'll take a moment and maybe present a question to the wider crowd to ask uh, what, according to you, is development or a developer? Anybody who would like to volunteer to answer this question? No? Oh, come on. Yes. Person who solves problem is a developer. OK, that's a good start. Anyone who would like to? Yes? Come again? Someone with? <laughs> Okay, 
I will take that. Anyone else? Any more creative answers? Oh, come on, people. Don't shy away like this. It's a good chance to, you know, rant about a role which you don't like, per se, who becomes a problem on your day-to-day -day basis, but like, okay. Usually when we talk about development or a developers, the visual that comes in front of us is somebody who's putting code together to build a solution so that we can solve some real-world problem. That is a development or a developer, right? This is how we visualize. And when we say development plus operation makes DevOps, which is great, but in this whole context, we are missing something else, which is programming and testing makes development. That's the aspect. That's the perspective. And this is what the industry is missing right now. When we say development, people or the wider uh, engineering community can only relate to a person who's sitting and doing a programming, getting the code put together, and pushing it into production, or reaching out to the operations for help to get his code to the production so that customers can use. But that's only half of the story. The other vertical of the industry involves testing, which is as important as putting the code together. Imagine a hospital without nurse. Imagine a, a restaurant without waiters. That's how it is. It's a most important function. Uh, the organization just doesn't run without these roles. But they just don't come in the forefront. When something really good happens, something is a success, they are not the one who will be the face of it. Just like a hero or a heroine in a movie will be the face of the entire movie, but there are other supporting characters who fills in and makes the story more interesting, isn't it? So that's what is happening with the testing. Right now, programming and testing together makes development. So in this whole aspect and the whole process, we have to define the DevOps like this. Development, testing, and operations together work to make solution come true and make customers' life easy. And as an engineering manager for me, every vertical or every function or every role in this industry is very important. I can't keep including programmers in my team or I can't keep including operation, operations personnel in my team to drive efficiency. I need all these three. And on top of that, I also need product. A person who um, goes out to the customer to understand the real world problems, bring the, solu uh, bring the requirements to us to get things working. So that role is also important. So as an engineering manager, I have to work with all, three, all these three roles. But the challenge that I am facing is all the focus is towards there. When we, spe when we speak about development and operations, my focus is how I can put, write my code, what is the problem, how I can write my code, and how I can get this code to the next level of the environment, to the next level of the environment, and finally take it to the production. That's all. We are not seeing other aspects of development which goes behind it, like testing. And the testing has multiple facets. It's a spectrum of beautiful activities that we perform right from the unit levels where the code is written till the production and even the post-production maintenance. And this focus right now is missing. And this missed focus is what is causing the frustration out there in the market because it's not well-defined synergy between operations and testing. What should go there? What are the functions that is derived? What tools are we using? So I'll take a pause to ask a question. How many of you got an opportunity to uh, collaborate or to have um, a chance to discuss things with your test engineering team? Good. I see at least a few hands up, which gives me a hope. So and also another reason why I'm here on the stage to gain more of your attention. I go, I take this concept and speak in the test conferences, it's not gonna help because they are the receivers. I have to be in the place where there are givers, which is operations people. And I'm here to address that exact question that build the synergy between operations and testing as well. There are a spectrum of activities that we perform, unit test, regression test, end-to-end -end test, accessibility test, security, data governance, compliance, um, I can rain down to make that feature strong and stable before it moves on to the next environment. It's like filtering and making the finest of the scotch possible. So this is how I visualize DevOps. The two verticals of code implementation and testing should have a synergy between them. Testing and operation should have a synergy between them. This helps me in driving this operational efficiency in the team. And DevOps is a binding agent they are present everywhere. 
Without them, no organization can move forward or think of anything to be done. So they are like the fundamental aspect, like air. And so let's look at a typical scrum. We all work in a scrum. Agile is a well-accepted methodology of working, which is great. And when we look at the typical scrum, it usually have these phases. The planning, implement, review, and release. Planning, we come up with the things that we want to implement. Implement is a stage where we actually sit and write the code and test this code. Review is a place where all the stakeholders come over, check if the solution built is fine or not, should we have to improve this, is something missing, and they provide their feedback. Basically, a cry-based session. And then it's a release if everything is OK. If not, it goes back as a feedback into the next planning, and the new sprint starts. And this goes on. When Agile came into the picture, and there was a Agile transformations happening from a process perspective across industry, it speaks about small iterative developments to drive continuous integration, which is great. But it speaks nothing about efficiency. It speaks nothing about uh, tools. It speaks nothing about collaboration. It speaks about cross-functional team should be self-sustaining to drive everything within a team, which is great. But how do we achieve this? There's still a lot of flaws. If I look at a feature, a simple feature, it goes through a lot of spectrum of activities, like it is built locally, then it is built in several environments, like I said, a refinement happening at every stage. A feature on an application is tested and beaten up and checked in various ways to see how far it can sustain itself out there in the production. The faults, the bugs, the defects, everything is checked before it's like QA passed, before it goes to the production. But now, when you see testing in the Agile, only Agile, no DevOps, remove DevOps. Only Agile, purely, which was like my 10 years ago when I saw there was OK, a generic branching strategy which was discussed already, which was, again, purely thought about. Code was written, implemented, and then was passed on to a specific dedicated environment called test environment, where the testing was done. But in this whole process, you see, the damage which was supposed to happen has already happened, which is the implementation phase, which is the code was built at the developer's laptop. And the things which the use cases which could have been tested got missed. The test data, which could have been generated in different ways, got missed. Because we work on the tight timelines. We cannot blame one single person saying, OK, he, should, he or she should have done their job better. We work on tight timelines. So I have to move my code to the next environment quickly so that I can work on the next feature. So when I'm doing this, I miss on several important things. And finally, when it comes to the test system, the damage is already done. Now we again revert back to the developer to fix things. Things get more expensive, and it gets delayed and lagged. This is exactly what DevOps is helping us test engineers in the development process, which is to shift left. We can shift everything to the left, go as near to the development as possible, go as near to the code where it is conceived, thought about, developed, so that you can find the bug at its source, where the cost and operational efficiency is much better. This is what we are trying to do. And this is what DevOps is helping this vertical, this role, or this function to achieve in the software industry. With DevOps in picture, this is what we are trying to, or this is what we get. We are able to left shift right at the spot when the code writes, and that code can be built locally to test that feature on its own. I am able to find so many problems right at its source. But to achieve this is not easy. To just to get this thing or this ball rolling in my organization, it's not easy. There's a lot of challenges that test engineering team faces from an infrastructure need perspective, from a test data perspective, from a layering of the infrastructure, or how it is orchestrated, overall system design. We are facing a problem in every possible way, and it is not seamless. And because of this, there is a huge aspect of the software development which is lagging behind, and we are not catching up with the industry. So what are the challenges? I can rain down for two days, making you get bored of all possible jargons of a testing industry, but that's not my point here. I want to come up with the three most important basic things that you have to go back and work with your test engineering teams, if you're not. If you're already doing this, kudos. But if you're not, these are the three things that you want to keep in mind. The first one being, 
infrastructure support. So in infrastructure, there are layers of problems again. Let me take the first four, top four layers of problems or the challenges that we have. The first one being layering of the environments. So in 2008, I joined SAP, which is an ERP-based company. So pretty huge. And application is also pretty complex from the domain perspective. We have multiple modules being interactive with each other. And when it comes to the testing, it, it gets even worse. Because we used to build the code, test it in the develop environment, move the code to the test environment, do the same testing again there, move it to the staging environment, do the testing, same testing again, with the same personals doing the same testing again. From staging, moving it to the pre-prod or the demo environment, do the testing again, move it to the prod, and do the testing again. You, we hardly have one or two test engineers within a team performing the same test on the same feature at every test layers. Why are we having so many test layers? Nobody have an answer. Who, who is supposed to give this answer? Who has a responsibility to answer this? It's definitely not the test engineering team. So it has to be well thought how many layers of refinement we want to do on a particular feature before it hits uh, production. And then there was a, a startup company which I was working in London, where there was only develop environment and straight to production. Pathetic. It's like it's the end of two different spectrums. So you, you can see both these worlds working completely opposite, and it's not efficient in itself. No matter how much we try to keep the health of an application once it goes outside to the production, it's definitely going to fail when our internal processes are not strong enough. So you have to help in building us a strong internal process for testing the application and make it more efficient. So the first question is, how many test layers you want and why you want? Why you need pre-prod, pre, pre smoke testing environment, marketing environment, demo environment, POSA environment? So is there any other way that you can solve this problem without having to get into the actual application development process and cut off the things which is not required? That's the first question. The second one, configurations. Has any of your test engineer come to you and said that, I am not able to reproduce this in my test environment because the configuration capacity that we have in the test environment is not good enough as that of a production. Or we don't have the same test data that a customer is using that I can use in my system to reproduce this issue. Resolving the application uh, bugs. Um, OK, let me rephrase it. So in one of the studies done by IDC groups, it has been seen that more than 50% of the issues gets lagged simply because it cannot be reproduced in the internal systems. It can be due to configurations, test data. It can be due to some external uh, applications, integrations, um, some sandbox setups. So, so many issues that we have operationally that we are not able to run efficiently as, as we require or, or as we would love to be in our day-to-day -day work. And that causes frustration every day. So this is another challenge that we have. The third is updating of the environments. When we have these layers of environments, I don't want to make it complex, um, having so many layers of environments. But if, you, if I have one or two, even then you can see the release candidates are not being moved to the, at the right time. We take the code cut, but sometimes there is some environments are updated and some aren't. This makes life even more difficult. Because when we sit for testing or do regression, we report the bugs, finally to realize the code has not reached there. But it's been updated in some other system. And then when the hotfixes happens, God knows in which branch, where, how it's getting updated, and finally reach production without having to reach the test engineering team. There is no, absolutely no fucking process. So sorry for my language. Um, <laughs> So there's no process, it's a havoc. And I'm telling you, for the last 17 years, I have seen this time and time again in all the teams, not just one or two, be it an enterprise-level organization or a startup. I have worked in all these, even the small and medium-sized organization. My present team is, is a medium-sized organization. And we still face these challenges. So from an operation perspective, how can we make things even better from updating of the environments? How to keep things up to date so that we don't have to lag? The last one when it comes to the environments is integrations. Let me quote you an example of my present work. 
So in <clears throat> at Lito, we do integrations with many external applications. Because we are cloud-based, it gives us opportunity to collaborate with other external SaaS-based applications. Now that puts me in a very uh, difficult spot because of the course issues, like exchanging of the secure headers. Um, just now we had a session before coffee where we were speaking about security issues, and we, have to, we should make our applications more stronger so that it's not vulnerable. This is also a part of testing that we do when a, when a feature is developed. It is internally performed from the test engineering team. But to do that, we do not have enough resources or a setup being done. These integrations, most of the failures, more than 70% of the application failures happens because the data exchange is not seamless between uh, the, the external services or the applications we are trying to integrate with. If you see the retail industry, nearly 23% of failures uh, occurs due to the, uh, the payment portal. The integrations fails. So there is no way that a test engineering team can fix this, but we need a support to collaboratively work with the ops team to get this infrastructure up and running in our favor so that we can do testing of all sorts and make it more stable. Point number two is supporting for the test layers. When I talk about test engineering, we don't just approach an application from the UI. We don't simply open an application, click a few buttons like how people explain things to you. We click a few buttons. If something is not working, something red comes up, oh, then we go log, log a bug. It is a part, just 10%. The other 90% of the task involves approaching every layer individually and then seeing if these layers integrate well with each other in the entire system design. This is, this is what is called a, a system approach or a systems thinking in test engineering. A very random example. Um, you may have a database layer, a functional layer, where mostly it's driven by the APIs or RPCs, you know, and then you have services uh, which are internally uh, communicating uh, with each other to perform a particular business function, and then everything's feeding on to the UI. UI is a fancy stuff where customers see. They are abstracted from the internal workings, but testers are not. Testers are expected to, to know every technical aspect that's working in every layer so that I approach DB. We do DB tests. We do performance tests, security tests on the DB. And then we do API performance, API security, data governance, data compliance tests, and legal, uh, if there are any, if it's like a banking or a trading, we have some legal tests also to be performed on these business functions. And then we check if these APIs are working perfectly well with the DB layer. Then we put everything together like a rainbow aspect to see like end to end of the system is working fine or not. But right now, when we see, no matter which domain, whether it's ERP, trading, banking, retail, retail is the most and worst hit. Simply because we are not able to uh, connect uh, well with the backend systems, especially if it is a legacy. Um, and if the data, the backend data is coming from the legacy applications, whereas it's working, uh, where the part of the application is working in the cloud, it's even bigger problem for us. So it's not easy. This is one other thing that you have to keep in mind when we design the operational aspect, or the um, yeah, the operational aspect of an application. The last one can be good and bad as well, which is spoiled by choices. This is from IDC. Every phase of the DevOps has plethora of like swarming of new tools coming in the market every day. And like how developers have their own framework, own tech stack, own tools to work, so do test engineering teams. They have their own tools, own test stacks, and like no own programming language. They still use the same defined set of programming languages, but the flavor is very different. We write a code to test a code to be more efficient and also to use this code across different test environments to reduce the manual labor as much possible so that we are operationally efficient. This is how we are becoming operationally efficient and also achieving the left shift in this whole process. So if uh, most likely the challenges occurs when I see quality engineering as a whole. We have a bug management system, we have a test management system, we have a test life cycle, and then we have reporting, dashboarding, analytics, log history, everything. 
everything that a developer or a programmer performs, so does this role of test engineering. But right now, the challenge we are facing is we are not able to connect to any of the CI tools properly. We are not able to be part of your CD process efficiently. We are not able to set up this feedback post-production into our test routine um, as seamlessly as possible. So please help the test engineering teams in identifying the right set of tools that fit into your operational aspects and see what can work well. In my present example, we are trying to integrate the test management tool, a new test management tool, into our day-to-day uh, -day working test, test engineering activities. And we are not able to do it because we work behind VPNs and their IP address is like an open IP which has been reused and reshared by multiple other clients, and we have a problem. And that is the only tool that is available for us in the market which can fit our needs right now. And we have, I have a tool, but I can't use it for XYZ technical reasons. So what is the other way? How can we make this bridge, uh, how can we bridge this gap? So these are some of the questions which are still open. So these are the three main things that I would like to leave with you and so that it gives you a good starting point to go back to your quality engineering team to start a discussion to see how you can help or how they can be benefited to bring in the efficiency in their work. Finally, I want to leave this slide with you that when we walk the path of DevOps, we are with you in every aspect, in every release. Like in the code stage, we are involved in the code reviews. We, we perform unit tests, we write, perform, uh, we write unit tests, we perform snapshot tests, these are some, I'm just giving the bare minimum. This can go beyond this, but this is just to give a conversational starter for you. And then when you go to the build, we do code scans, check for the code smells, we check for the vulnerabilities, which is like the security testing, we do linting. Um, so all these are part of the quality engineering, which basically our job of ensuring this code is good enough. When it comes to the testing, there is like spectrum of activities, which I just explained for the last 30 minutes. And then release, we wait. It's taken to the production safely. Again, when you go to the release, or when you deploy, we check for various other activities. Even after it goes to the production, our job does not stop. We do smoke tests. We check for the sanity. We check for its existence. And then finally, we monitor. We collaborate with the operations team, the usage metrics, the analysis metrics that you take about the APIs. We reach out to you to know how it is operating so that we can incorporate in our usual test routines so that we are not missing anything. Uh, so here we are at the end of the slide. Pretty much I have rained down every aspect of a test engineering and the pain points that we have right now and how we can collaborate better to improve the test engineering. So again, revisiting my point, if you have not got an opportunity to work with your test engineering teams or a quality engineering teams, do reach out. When you design the operational aspect of an application, keep test engineering in mind. Do not give an opportunity for the test ops as a separate vertical to raise. It is not required. Test ops, there is nothing. It is pretty much part of the DevOps. Now, because it has been ignored, because there is no focus, this new term um, or a new jargon is just coming up or popping up, it's of no reason not required. So I think we can collaborate better to do uh, the usual stuff in a, in, a, in a more efficient manner. So I will stop here to take any questions if you have. Um, yeah. Hi. Uh, my question is, do you support uh, segregating test engineers and uh, developers, or do you support them being basically the same person? <clears throat> That's a very good question. So this is a long-standing fight that is happening in the, in the industry, okay? Um, when the waterfall was there, there was a clear handoff between planning to development, development to testing, and testing to production. There was a clear separation. This is what we call as handoffs happening. When Agile came, the whole Agile manifesto idea was it's a cross-functional team. Everybody in the team is a developer. We term them as a developer. There is no more distinction between as a developer or a tester. And the same person should be completely capable of writing the code, testing the code, and you know, moving the code to the production or, to the, or doing the deployments. The idea is that. But in the industry, at the ground level, that is not working. So if you look, randomly pick any six teams, randomly, and you see clearly there will be a person who will be sitting and writing the code and a person who will be testing the code. According to... I don't know where I read this, so I cannot quote, but less than like 5% of the teams are actually following Agile with Agile mindset. 
Restore are still working with a waterfall approach and then call themselves as agile. Like, I plan, like a two-week sprint, I plan now, six days of development, and almost at the end of the sprint, they give for testing, which is nothing but waterfall running in a two-week sprint mode. And they call themselves as agile. No, this is a agile. You know, it's not. So yeah, for your answer, that is a thing. Ideally, it should be, but at the ground level, no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It pent out uh, very good points about testing. Uh, I have two questions actually. Uh, the first one is basically you said you worked in medium companies, enterprises, and such as startups. Uh, usually, companies take this term that. They focus on the quality, but when it comes to the real life situations, when it comes to the cost, for example, whenever they want to cut costs, it's usually on the QA, like no investment in the tools yeah. or the time they need, for example, for testing. Yeah. So how do we fix that, for example, in any kind of uh, company, startup to enterprise? Uh, the second question is uh, we find uh, that the technologies and the new stuff that is coming in development, for example, for developers, is going like incremental. Meanwhile, in testing, it's just linear since it began, for example. We don't see much references, books, you barely find books uh, written about testing. And uh, but my question here is like, why is there is no one caring about this part? Thank you. That's a good question. And um, I think yesterday, was it Jan Fries or Emron? I don't know. Uh, they showed about the bottleneck. The bottleneck is at the top. Yes, it's for sure. So is for test engineering. So for a for a small scale in, a small scale organization or a startup, if I had to like cut the cost, right? Like like you rightly mentioned, we want to avoid as much possible about testing. We just want to get the POC or whatever we are developing directly to the production so that we can keep our um, uh, the the companies which are funding us happy, you know, so that we can show something is moving, something we have developed, and it's in production. It's purely the mindset, and that's what the industry is fighting right now. How can we improve this education, educating? It is important that we educate, speak about it, talk about it, and that's what communities are doing. Uh, Bruce just mentioned about DevOps communities, right? We have so many test engineering communities right now. We are trying to put that light that it's not just about programming, everything, all the other aspect that goes around with it is, is equally important in it. So first is education. We have to educate as many stakeholders and business people as possible. Um, and the second question was about, yeah, the technology. So I, I'll say you with the, with the inventions of the new low code, no code, and the AI relevant testing tools, we are trying to see it's about to bridge the gap that we had. The test engineering also has one more challenge, which is a skill set. It has been a very kind engineering role where people from all walks of life come. They would have done chemistry as a major, so the biology as majors, and still they would prefer to come um, to, the test, uh, to the software field. And test engineering is one spot which makes them available to immediately enter into the software engineering. And we have seen people from many roles, many skill sets coming in and trying to struggle to make their life with software testing or software development. And so it has not caught up yet, you're, as you're right. And the other problem is also they're trying to push as much tools what developers are using on also to the testing. It's not helpful for us. We have to do an inside out approach. So the, question, the answer for that would be the present AI tools and the low code, no code tools which are entering the market is trying to bridge this gap, but we are not there yet. There are tools which are coming. We are in a better place than what we were 10 years ago. But yes, we are surely lagging. How can we improve? Well, we just have to wait and see or come up with our own tools if you have enough um, resources to build the tools or see how we can engineer with the existing tool. That's the reason why I'm here today addressing this problem with a wider operational minds here to help like, we need your support to be better at our job. Ah, that was a long answer, sorry. Um, I, do we have time? Questions? Okay, I think I'm done with my time and I have to leave the stage. Uh, you have been a wonderful audience. Thank you so much for listening to me. Have a nice day.